you do this is you grab this uh, suture needle with your needle driver, in this case the uh, Leatherman Squirt P4, and you just pull up and out, and you now have a If you're in a controlled environment, typically we're going to use a suture kit, and in that suture kit is going to be a needle driver. You're not going to have either one of these in your pocket personal aid kit. So what can you do? Trust me, that needle is too small to use with just your fingers. Not going to work. I have two options for you to consider as field expedient needle drivers. One is the Leatherman Scale Tool. And it'll be difficult, but you can use the plier tips as a needle driver to drive that needle. Another option, and I think a very useful option, is the Leatherman Squirt P4. This is a great little tool. It's got a small plier tip. More importantly, it's spring-loaded, and that's going to make picking up the needle and driving it easier. All right, let's get into the nitty-gritty of the technique itself. Three simple things to keep in mind, and I, I don't mean to minimize this, this uh, technique. To be honest, suturing is um, something a little bit difficult, but if you're going to do it, I figure um, in a remote situation, if you can remember these three things, you're probably going to be successful. Number one, the check mark. Number two, long over to short. And number three, two, one, four. Again, check mark, long over to short, two, one, four. We'll talk about those in a minute. Let's take a look at a basic wound. So there's the surface of the skin. There's the wound. Here's the check mark. This really represents the suture. This is the short tail, long arm, long tail. Keep that in mind, and I will keep reinforcing that as we go through actual suturing. Remember, it's a V or check mark, short arm, long arm. As you're suturing, you're going to place your needle driver. In this case, we're going to be using our Leatherman squirt. You're going to be placing that in the V and you're going to be wrapping the long arm over the needle driver towards the short. Again, there's a V. We're going to come and squirt, hold it in the middle of the V, and take the long arm of the suture, wrap it around, and over to the short. One last little word of caution before we actually suture. Let's talk about the risks and complications of suturing. And again, I'm not advocating this be used as a First off, be rarely used and should be used under austere conditions when there's no other option. Should be very rare. The risks of suturation, abscess formation, damage to underlying tissue such as tendons, nerves, and the vasculature. You also have to worry about a retained foreign body. So this is not something to be taken lightly, and if you're going to do it, you and your buddy should discuss this option, and both of you should understand the risks and complications, and you should both decide that this is the only option. All right, let's get down to the business of uh, suturing. So at this point, we've considered that this is the only option. We're in a remote wilderness environment, perhaps deployed in a remote tactical environment. Either way, difficult and austere conditions, extraction and getting to medical help is not an option. All other options have been considered and um, we've decided on suturing. And we've decided on suturing between you and your buddy. You both understand the risks and complications. The wound, the bleeding has been stopped. The wound has been cleaned and irrigated and we're ready to start. We reach in and pull out our suture material, and again, we realize we're not going to have a needle driver. We're going to be using our Leatherman Squirt P4. 
good field option. You also may or may not have a pair of scissors. You're going to need something to cut the suture material as you proceed. If you don't have scissors, remember in the first aid kit, we've got a single-edged razor blade. Just be careful you don't cause another wound or cut yourself. All right, I've got the wide-angle lens on to make it easy. Let's get down to the actual wound. Now, I couldn't get anybody to volunteer a wound, so I've got the standard training model here, and this is a pig's foot. Let's take a look at the wound that's right there. That's perfect for our um, demonstration. We're going to be closing that wound right there. Let's talk real quickly about orientation of the wound. I'm going to recommend to you that you orientate the wound so that it's parallel to your body and not perpendicular to your body. The reason for this is if you are suturing and tying a knot, it's easier to tie in this direction than it is in this direction where you will frequently be crossing your hands. So orientate your wound parallel to your body.